We just we just planted these, um, and I love them. They remind me of Boris Johnson's hair. That's not the reason I love them, but they're kind of cool. <laughs> I'm Emily. I'm Marina, and this is Sawcliff. That's where we live. Sawcliff is a farmhouse with uh, very ancient roots, and it's very hard to establish how old it really is. I think my parents spent almost 30 years renovating it. We started a guest house in 2019, and last year we hosted 2,000 guests, and we were only open for eight months, so it's been going away. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This week we are going to be renovating the library which is in the middle of the house there. We have some guests coming very soon and we're hoping to renovate it and do an incredible like mural on the inside to make it much more exciting for guests to stay in. Um, we don't have a lot of time to do it. When I first saw the house I was absolutely in, in despair because uh, part of the roof was none. There was a great big hole out there. The dormer windows we have put in so this was all just felted over. The outbuildings were in a dire state. What did Dad say? What he was said, it? Because he's very and, eccentric. And, uh, <laughs> do you know what your father said? Isn't it lovely? <laughs> when Mum first started decorating the house, she had a very colourful taste, which was not in fashion at the time at all. Many farmers who came to visit didn't like it, what you'd done. But very recently, somebody came to visit from that same group who, who told you, oh, you must be so glad that your, your style is finally in fashion. <laughs> I think this out with the old and in with the new is our life motto. To let something new in, you have to let go of something old. Yeah, so if you want to decide on a yellow, you forego the red. If you're having a blue, you can't have the green. Yeah, you have to make decisions and sometimes you just have to cheerfully let go and then you open up the space and something will happen. Yeah, I think, yeah. We have this wonderful marble tops and I absolutely adore it that it's now getting patination, which becomes more tactile and more interesting as you go along sort of these little yeah, scratches, splotches. I yeah. think this is fantastic. Most people would say that's sustain and be really precious about it, but I was when you first put it in, I was like, no, 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 no. But mom was like, whatever, just throw the coffee around. We need to get some spice on it. And when we have uh, guests here, they're often here for celebrations. I think quite a lot of alcohol is built, to be honest, so. <laughs> so this is the Agra. This is the hub of the house. Do you remember how we ended up doing this, Mum? We wanted to do something really, really special as a splashback. And at the time, this looked like a good idea because the children had broken so many of my favorite plates. And I kept them, so we stuck them on. It's just such fun, and I love it. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> nice having the queen look down on your like eggs in the morning. <laughs> it is. Yeah. This is the living room. The color on the wall is a deep uh, Dutch pink. Uh, and I chose it specifically because up here it can be cold in winter and you want to be cozy inside and you want to have the, the glow, a sunny glow inside the room. And when you draw the curtains and have low lighting, this becomes all golden and it, it really envelops you. Dutch pink not being pink, being orange. Dutch pink is an orange, Emily. Okay, so before people are like, is she color blind? <laughs> no, no, no. Emily, that color is called Dutch pink. When we first came to the house, everything was a little bit lacking in, in, in detail. And I think one of the first things I did, I put the family crest on the toilet seat because it was very fashionable in the 80s. Uh, and then I decided to add the family motto, but I kind of changed it a bit. So I chose a different uh, motto. And it says, après moi, le déluge. That means after me, the flood. So please flush, yeah. <laughs> but it also means I'll do what I like. Those after me have to deal with it. So this is the dining room. It's particularly beautiful at night and in candlelight. Previously, it was a light green and that was not settling at all for dinner. And this blue is really setting off the, the golden tones in, in the curtains uh, much better than the previous color did. I don't know if you want to explain this. I found that in a sale and I just absolutely adored it and I thought these things look fantastically nuanced on a, on a high contrast background color. This is how I used my leftover paint. 
At the time I wanted to finish off these staircases, there was the question of putting runners in and the, the runners that I liked I couldn't afford. And I, th I think you were losing your mind a bit because at that point you were like Jackson Pollocking it. Pollock? <laughs> Pollock? <laughs> Jackson Pollocking it. Yeah. People are quite afraid of colour, I think, which is a shame. You know, if you decide to just go a bit crazy, like Mum, <laughs> you can just paint over it if you don't like it. So just don't get too attached to it. So this is the library where the main project for this week is. See, this is a very comfortable room as it is, but it's still quite disparate. The things don't hang together so very well. And that's the reason why we've chosen to really go for it here. This fabric was bought 20 years ago, right? You found it in a bargain bin or something. Yeah. Which is original William Morris fabric. It's not made anymore, but it's very beautiful. But in the designs, we're going to be using the curves and using the oak leaves as inspiration. And I think they're going to go on the walls as well. And we have a beautiful bed that we found on eBay, which is uh, from the same period as this pattern, really, which is what, 1905? 18... I think that's maybe 1880 or something yeah. like that. Okay, so turn of the century. So we're going to be replacing this whole thing yeah. with something older. <laughs> so these are um, just quite sturdy or a little bit wobbly IKEA bookcases. And we're hoping to replace them with antiques, which we're going to go shopping for. But they've, they've served us well. Uh, Mum's very modest, but all the books on here, this is only half of her collection. She's read every single one of them. So the only reason we have a library is because she's very literate. We're all dyslexic, so... <laughs> Somebody has to do the reading for you. Yeah, someone's got to, someone's got to be educated. <laughs> it's an eight day paint job. We've got big plans for the ceiling. These are the provisional colours that we've chosen to go onto the walls and the ceiling. So I don't think I thought we would choose a pink ceiling, but that's what we've done. But we've chosen this colour for the walls because we need a high contrast for our beautiful bed shape. Highlighting colours. I'll just show you, for example, if you had this yellow on its own, it's not, it's kind of um, Flat. muted. Yeah. But then if you put it in next to a dark, a dark colour, it will really jump. And so we're just looking for the, those kind of combinations because we're going to be muralling as well. So we have the base colours. And then on top of that, we're going to be doing muralling lots of animals and bodies and flowers and things. So we're looking for good combinations so that we can, you know, have outlines and fill-ins and I don't know what you call it, but okay. detail. <laughs> so, Ooh, what happened? Is it that? I wonder. It's a Velcro. I thought I was going to have to fight with it. You know, you usually have to like get your teeth in there. <laughs> and this is the nice thing because you can, afterwards you can pack it again. I quite like using uh, paintbrushes to apply the paint because it gives a much nicer finish and I always go at, at various angles because it gives a, a, a ni nicer coverage. You don't get some of these lines in it. You see how fat these paints are? This looks great. I love that colour. Isn't that nice? Amazing. It's quite nice to see it next to the, to the sample because it's actually really, really accurate. Uh-huh. You see that? Now we see how it dries. Shall we watch it dry? <laughs> <laughs> I think we just got carried away. We just really liked the paints and completely forgot about how we were supposed to be doing it. Fine. We'll make it up. This no, is pretty much how it's going to go, I think. The first coat is going to be like this. I mean, this is going to have a different colour on it. Can we rename this paint? What is it called? Is it Red 03? I think it sort of looks like baby's buttocks. Or maybe apricot. <laughs> it's a more PC version. <laughs> We've got a genius at work here. And that's the ceiling. This is the ceiling design. <laughs> <laughs> 